Hello, and welcome to another segment of the Coatesville Area Public Library's Oral History Project. I'm talking today with Mr. Joseph Piscaglio, a lifetime resident of Coatesville and owner of a family business here as well. Good morning, Joe. It's good, good morning. To, good morning. It's good to be here. It's good to have you with us and have you participating in our project here. Good. Joe, you date back a few years? Yes, I do. Care back, to share that with us? Back to 1936 is when I was born. I was born in my place of business, which is located at 8th Avenue and Lincoln Highway. You were born in the business? Yeah, right above the business. Uh -huh. <laughs> right above it. So you were living over top of the business at the time. I'm right. I see. Okay. Right. Well, your father started that business? Yes, he did. Uh, my father started the business back in 1929, and he started with a pharmacy, mm -hmm. and then it progressed on and on for 50-some years, and then we saw that we didn't have a chance in the pharmacy business any longer, and he passed away, so we decided to go into a very easy business, which is a very happy business, a candy and cart business, mm -hmm. and, and we're still at it uh, after all these years. Yes. So my wife and I are the only ones that work in the business at this present time. Mm -hmm. Joe, let's back up for just a moment okay. if we can. Uh, you mentioned that you it became obvious that you were not going to be able to continue in the pharmacy business. Uh, tell us how that happened and, and why you moved out away from it. Well. At the time, uh, we saw that our profit margin was declining because of the competition, and it was due to the fact of the big chains moving in our area. Mm -hmm. And in independent pharmacies couldn't exist under the pressures that the chains were giving us, such as uh, lower prices, which is uh, that's part of America, mm -hmm. you know. And so we decided to move on to another another type of business and my wife and I decided the candy and card would be the place to go and it's a happy business mm -hmm. and that's why we're what we're doing now mm -hmm. whenever I think of a pharmacy there's something else that goes along with it and that's soda fountains that's great uh, too I think uh, in in early America went pretty much hand in hand that's right that's right we had a very good soda fountain business and uh, it was a, uh, the heart of our business, you might call it, because it brought business into our pharmacy. Mm -hmm. And it was a family-oriented uh, business, and, uh, and the friends that would come to see us would sit at the fountain, and that's when we had the discussions about who's going to win the next game in Coatesville High School or Downingtown, and things like that. So it was probably as much of a social club as anything else. That's correct. That's right. Do you ever have any notables, any celebrities sitting at your soda fountain that you can recall? Yes, we've had many. Uh, I can't really give you their names because I don't know if they, uh, there's a privacy act, yeah, sure. right? But there were some that wrote books, and we were in some of the uh, better selling novels of our day. And uh, there were, uh, frankly, well, there was the coaches and and uh, people from uh, all nationalities came there mm -hmm. to discuss certain things, and and it was very, very, uh, very, very nice. Uh, we had the booster club started there with the Coatesville High School mm -hmm. booster club, and it helped raise money for the athletic department, and and we had coaches and oh, uh, and movie stars also. Yes, I'm sure you've seen a lot of changes at Eighth and Main in particular. Well, throughout Coatesville as well. Tell us about some of the things that just aren't anymore. <laughs> well, uh, the thing that I remember most was my father had me delivering prescriptions and uh, different uh, medical uh, supplies to different doctors in our area. Along Chestnut Street from 7th Avenue on up to almost first avenue to were doctor's offices believe it or not yes and i guess you remember that well i was the one that had to deliver to all these doctor's offices and uh, we also had hospitals in that area too the uh, coachville area had i think three hospitals at the time when i was delivering there was one in the east end of town there was the Atkinson hospital and then there was the coachville hospital and of course the veterans hospital 
but there was a little hospital on between 12, uh, 13th and 12th Avenue. The name of the hospital I can't remember, but the only thing I remember about the hospital itself was the odor of it. They, were, they had a very tungent uh, disinfected in, the, in that little hospital. It was a small hospital on Olive Street between 13th Avenue and 12th Avenue. And some of the old timers probably remember it well. And uh, I used to deliver uh, medication there for my father. And of course, the Coatesville Hospital, which was located on Strode Avenue in the west end of town, mm -hmm. remember it. And uh, the Veterans Hospital, we also delivered too. So what, what transportation were you using to make all these deliveries? Well, we were using a small car at the time. And uh, it was like a little delivery wagon with our with the name of Sandy's Pharmacy on it. And uh, the doctors would call our store, and within minutes, we had to have the medication to them. So my father had me uh, on a pair of skates, you might say, running from one place to another. <laughs> but it was a very interesting, uh, very, very interesting process. And you would have been how old at this time? What I was a uh, young, young, young man when I 16 years old at the most, mm -hmm. yeah, because that's when I would start driving. Mm -hmm. and, it was interesting, really. Yes. You graduated from high school in, from what building? <laughs> I graduated from the old Scott Senior High School in 1955. Mm -hmm. We have a very, very active uh, uh, alumni association, uh, our, our association, and we meet every five years or every two to three years, and our meetings are very interesting, and uh, we have very nice turnouts, and, and we're, I'm proud of being a a graduate of Coatesville High School. I'm I sure really are. are. But uh, there's so many things about the school system has changed too in my area. It has indeed. <laughs> um, I think the school system is is to the better. Is it's going forward. Mm -hmm. But when I was going to school, it seemed to me that I remember Coatesville was a a town, and it still is a beautiful city that had schools. Uh, in different areas. We had a school in the West End, if you remember. We had a school in the uh, south of Coatesville. We had a school in the heart of Coatesville, which is Gordon Junior High School. It was actually the Coatesville, Hospital, uh, Coatesville High School at one time. When my father went there in 1925, he graduated from uh, Gordon Junior High School, which was the Coatesville High School at the time. And is now Carl Benner Elementary that's, School. That's right. And then uh, we also had the James Adams School, which was a very lovely school in, in the uh, north. Uh, it was in the North Eighth Avenue section of town. And of course, then we had the. Uh, uh, we called it Columbia Avenue at the time. We were just talking about that, and that turned to Terry School, which uh, it was a beautiful school in which I went to. And uh, then we had the Scott Senior High School. So all the schools were located in the town itself, in our city itself, where our, we could walk to. Everyone walked to school. What we didn't have the buses we have today, and uh, I. I thought that was nice, and one thing I remember about Scott Senior High School, and I love it to this day, and I wish it would happen again, the old bell tower. Do you remember the bell tower? Yes. It's still there. Um, I think Mr. Ridgway donated the organs for that, uh, for the school, and at Christmas time, they would play the organ, and, and that beautiful music would come out of the bell tower as the organ was playing and it was snowing and it was beautiful. It was just covered the whole east end of town with beautiful Christmas music and I miss that dearly. Yes. So I don't know if that's going to be of any value but yes. that's something well, I'm I've sure written. Joe because uh, no one else has mentioned the fact that, that we had music coming out of that bell tower at one time. It, oh, so, it was gorgeous. It was sure. a gorgeous event and uh, during the uh, when we would graduate, they would play music, and we would go from the gymnasium to the auditorium, and it was, it was a gorgeous, gorgeous thing. It was nice. Did you leave Coatesville for any period of time, Did you go away to school? Or? No, I, I stayed right there in Coatesville, and um, I, I went to school, but uh, 
I, I, my roots are at Coatesville. I, I, I went back to Coatesville and I stayed in Coatesville. I never left Coatesville and I think <laughs> I'm going to die in Coatesville, really. I really am. Because I remember the uh, old butcher shops and the old shoemaker shops and the, and the things like that and, and the old train station that, that uh, they had in Coatesville and the, you know, the Greyhound would go through. And, and these are the things that, and the churches is, is, is what I remember a lot of. Uh, the beautiful churches we have in our town, in our city. With all the businesses in Coatesville that you've mentioned, there, there must have been a lot of uh, commerce on the streets. What was it like to walk through Coatesville on a Saturday evening? <laughs> that, that's a good question. Saturday evening was a beautiful, beautiful evening to walk through Coatesville. They were, we were actually bumping into people. Fridays were even more so. Fridays were busier than Saturdays. I, it, in my section of town it was. And uh, we had the ice cream sodas and the, and the sundaes and the mountain creams that uh, the soldiers used to come back. The, before they even came, went home, they would grab a, a mountain cream and take home with them because they missed that so, mm -hmm. believe it or not. What is a mountain cream? A mountain cream is a concoction of strawberry, vanilla, pineapple with a dash of milk and soda water. And that is a mountain cream, and it was only noted in our area. And uh, there was a few places that made it uh, like we did. And we had the banana skyscrapers and the banana splits and uh, the chocolate nut sundaes and things like that. And uh, the servicemen really enjoyed uh, coming down to the fountain because my father never charged a serviceman anything. Uh, especially when he was in uniform That's for the sodas and things like that. But all those concoctions have gone the way of the soda fountain. I think so. Mm -hmm. I, I would like to bring it back again myself. I wish I, in fact, I know I could probably, but it, uh, I'm getting a little older now. <laughs> My legs just won't carry me as much. But it, it, it's something to remember the jukebox. I like to bring a jukebox back into, to, into the business. The business, yeah. But uh, I don't know. It, 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 it's, it's, ple it's just pleasant memories for me. And, it's, and I have so many of my customers today come in the store wishing we had those things. And it makes me want to do it again. Really, I'm serious about that. Mm -hmm. And maybe I might. Who knows? Who knows? Right. <laughs> Joe, you've been uh, affiliated with some civic organizations in our community. Uh, tell us about the kinds of things that those organizations have been dealing with over the years. Well, I, I'm proud of being a Coatesville Lion. <laughs> we have a lot of good organizations like the Rotary and the Optus and all, but I am proud of being a Coatesville Lion. And I am, uh, I, I was lucky enough with the guidance of Bill Barnes, who, who was my secretary, to guide me on to being 100% president of the Lions Club at the time. And it was a, it, it, it made our community a stronger bond with other clubs and uh, I, I'm so proud to be in a line because it made me a better person myself for helping the blind and for helping other people in life. I think it's important that uh, a person could, could be in that type of thing myself. You know? And then I was in the Knights of Columbus, which is a religious organization that Catholics have, and it was a nice thing to be in also. But uh, I'm so devoted to my business now, I can't, I can't really uh, be active in these things as much as I was before. Mm -hmm. and, but they were pleasant experiences, and I'm so happy that I was a part of it. Joe, I'd like to uh, go back historically a little bit further. You've uh, spent your entire educational career here in Coatesville. Mm -hmm. Were there any particular teachers that come to mind that are no longer with us that you can feel free to talk about now? Isn't that a nice question? You know, that, that's great. There's so many of them, so many of them. From Frank, Frank Gladding, he was a chemistry teacher in, in uh, the old high school, Scott Senior High School. His wife was a doll. She, she taught me an awful lot. She was a librarian, but she was a very, very gracious person. And there were so many, many, many more dedicated teachers like Mr. Shilladay. He, uh, he's still with us. And I remember he, him. You re oh, all right, great. He, he took time to teach you how to 
to uh, do things in art, which was very, very, and he stayed after school with me. And we stayed after school together many, many times. And my father was, at the time, was on the school board. He wondered what was going on. And he checked up on us, thinking that there was something funny going on, you know, because my father was a very inquisitive person. He wanted to know where his son was at all times. And here we were up in the art room uh, doing a lot of projects, different kind of projects. And he was very uh, excited about that. But that's when uh, I saw that these teachers would take so much time of their own without thinking about financial values of what they're doing and, and, and helping the children and the students. And there are many, Miss Gear, Miss Hoffman, uh, these, these names, of course, or if some have forgotten and some aren't. Well, I remember and Marian Gear. Very. Oh, she was tough. Yes. She was a tough, tough, tough teacher. But they're the ones you, I remember. Um, oh, there's so, so many from elementary school in uh, the old Terry school system. Miss Paxson, who was in charge of, uh, I think, uh, music. Um, we can go on and on and on and on and on. We we were very, very blessed with the teachers that we had then. And I'm sure there's teachers now that are even uh, uh, dedicated to the uh, profession of teaching. I, I'm sure they are there today, and, they, and the school system has it today. Yeah. I really feel that way. Joe, I have to ask you, uh, later on in your life, you formed a very unique association with an individual here in our community, uh, Art Douglas from WCOJ. Yes. Tell us how that came about. Well, Art, <laughs> here we go back to the soda fountain again. Yes. Uh, Art loved uh, our, I think it was our chicken salad sandwiches that we made at the soda fountain. So he would come over from when he was in the afternoon when he was off the air and have our chicken salad sandwiches. He enjoyed them uh, immensely. And um, I got to talking to him and I, would get up as early as he would because I had to open the store early in the morning, the pharmacy early in the morning. and So I knew that they were probably thirsty for coffee. So I would bring coffee over to the radio station, which, which was located across the street from our pharmacy at 8th Avenue. And from that day on, 30 some years, almost, almost 40 years, we've known each other. and We've been the best of friends. And, and uh, he's a very unique, unique man uh, that I, uh, re I, I I can honestly say he's a very fast thinking man. He, he can really put the show across and it was all arts uh, knowing how to go about doing the radio station and I miss him dearly. Uh, he's doing well now and uh, he's retired and uh, but uh, I really miss art an awful lot for, because we had some good times together and what we did together. Yes. It was all for, it was all on count of art. He's a good man. Well, I remember turning on the radio in the morning quite a number of occasions and there you were, Art Douglas's sidekick. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How, how did that happen? How did he manage to get you to come on the air with him on a regular basis? He is a, like I was saying, he's a very unique man and he knew that I had the old-fashioned qualities of, 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 uh, of cooking and of uh, gardening and of, and what he did, he brought that out to the public. And of course, he made fun of it, which was the right thing to do. But we were putting something across. In fact, we were so good at it. Well, Art was so good at it that my wife was was getting mad at some of the things I was saying on the air about uh -oh. her. <laughs> but we were doing it in a kidding fashion, and it was one of those type of things that went across well, and no one was hurt by it. Yes. And that's, that's the trick of, of broadcasting, I think. Uh, he had all the tricks, and he knew what he was doing, and he did it in a fashion that was very, very nice. It wasn't off color. You understand what yes. I'm saying? Mm -hmm like some of the things you hear today. Yes. Joe, I know that there have been a, a number of parades and other activities in Coatesville because I've participated in some of them myself. 
and they always seem for some reason or another to want to go right down Main Street. Of course, that's where Sandy's Pharmacy was. Mm -hmm. Tell us about some of the things you remember passing by the front door of the family business. Well, I remember we had many, many, many parades, and they lasted, some of them lasted three to four hours, as you remember. Yes. And uh, I, what, I, what I liked most about the parades were the bands. I enjoyed the bands, and, and there were bands from not only our area, but from other school districts. And uh, it was really a neat thing to see Downingtown participating, Westchester, in your hometown. And uh, these bands were from uh, Kennedy Square, all, all over the Chester County area. And I thought that was a, a neat thing to see and hear that these, uh, that this is happening to Coatesville, in, in Coatesville. And I think it's going to come back. Mm -hmm. I really do. I remember specifically one uh, fire company parade. I think it was for the housing of a new engine or something. Mm -hmm. And we had fire companies from all over Chester County that were lined up on Olive Street and Walnut Street and Oak Street from 8th Avenue headed east. Right. And then they would peel them off one at a time and bring them right down 8th Avenue to Main Street in front of your business and then we started from there. That's right and it was, it was good for the community and it still is good for the community and I think it's going to come back. I really do. I, yeah. I have that feeling. Now, don't ask me why but I, they're, they're good things at Coatesville. Yeah. They are. For some reason, Joe, I remember the Halloween parades too. Yeah, I participated in them. Yeah, have you? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, they were nice. In fact, I won a uh, Believe us or not, I was a hobo when I was a young man in a Halloween parade. I think it was the Chamber of Commerce or someone who sponsored it. It might have been the Chamber of Commerce. I'm not sure. I was a little boy at the time, and I won a little table from Lipkin's Furniture Store. <laughs> and that was a highlight of, of it. was just a great feeling. Mm -hmm. uh, they gave nice prizes out then. So they, these are the kind of things I remember. What other activities have there have occurred in Coatesville that we just don't do anymore? Well, well, I I remember the sock hops. I remember the the. Uh, I, I hope I hope you remember this. Uh, in back of the old West End Fire Company, they used to have dances for the young people. And we would walk all the way to the West End. It was unusual for the East Enders to walk to the West End because it seemed like there was a, the East End stayed in the East End and the West End stayed in the West End, the, 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 the teenagers, you know. And mm -hmm. we would walk there, and everyone was nice, and, and they had some beautiful dances in the back of the fire hall, in the West End uh, uh, fire and, that and this I, would have been early 50s, I would guess? Yeah, I would yeah. say, yes. Mm -hmm. And we would walk through the coach town, all the way through town to get to the dance. And it, it was very nice for the teenagers. Mm -hmm. And everyone seemed to get along, and we had some good times, and I met some lovely, lovely people there. Going to sock hops, I'm sure you must have some memories <laughs> of, the kinds, of the kinds of music that they played yeah. then. Yes, yes. And Any particular song titles that might have been favorites at the time? Oh, there was an awful lot of them. There was, and we had our own band too, mm -hmm. and uh, and it, there were so many good good things about about the high school and, mm -hmm. and the things that we did. And there, uh, I think Earth Angels was one, and Stardust was another. Mm -hmm. Things like that. Yeah. yeah, the music was it was very nice, mm -hmm. nice for everyone. I think. Joe, you uh, have children, of course, and of course grandchildren, but I know that you've been uh, very attached to children right. in general over the years. What changes have you seen in the way children think and their attitudes about life? That's a very good question. It's very good because I, I'm going to tell you something, and this is from my heart. I think the children today have much more on the ball than we did when we were growing up. And what, what, what I, I'm not going to say we, I'm going to use myself as I. Um, they have more opportunities. Just looking around the school here, I just 
climbing the steps of this new school. I've never been in here, believe it or not. The only time I came here is when my daughter had a uh, play. But I never was in a room like this. This is, this is fascinating. This is fascinating to me that the students today have these facilities and the teachers to provide, to teach these facilities to these children. We didn't have them then. And I'll tell you, I, I think our, our grandchildren got something to look forward to, especially what we have today with the computers. We didn't have computers then. We, it was great just to listen to a radio to hear the gangbusters or the shadow, things like that. Mm -hmm. that, that, was, that was big time. And uh, today the children are born with televisions, with computers, with, with people with knowledge like they have today. It, 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 it just baffles my mind. I really do. And when I cook and I had to turn a microwave on, it baffles my <laughs> mind just to use those switches. And, and my ovens are, are the same way. But what I'm saying is the children today got more opportunities than you can ever shake a stick at. And I want to tell you, they're going to go ahead. They're going, they're going big time. This is, this is no minor league. They're going right up to the top. I'm sure. And, and I, I give these students here in this school and in our Chester County schools a lot of credit because they're going to be something. And every one of them are going to be doing good. I'm sure of that. Mm -hmm. I'm proud of that. Joe, thinking back over advances in technology, I would guess that you were probably a teenager when television first came That's along correct. and became popular. Share with us your, your your impressions of early television. Early television, American Bandstand. Yes. <laughs> American now there was a sock hop. That was a sock hop, <laughs> right. I enjoyed that American Bandstand. And um, Dick Clark is a, a remarkable man. He's still around with us. And, and uh, it was very interesting. That, but uh, the thing that amazed me is when color television came out. How can you tell, explain what a color television looks like to a person that never saw it? It's hard to explain. Uh, a signal will go through the air and it comes out in colors. Mm -hmm. I mean, but uh, color television was very fascinating to me. And I'm, I'm sure that there will be people watching this tape who will say, color TV, wasn't it always? Yeah, that's not, right. Not realize right. that uh, there were days that right. were called black and white. That's correct. That's right. Well, Joe, I want to thank you for being with us right. and, and participating in our project. Uh, you've brought to light another new uh, facet of Coatesville that some of us may not have been acquainted with. I'm proud of it, okay. being at Coatesville. Thank you again. Thank you again.